Yes, that was very clever hurling, really out of Calvary because uh, the midfielder stole into a position. The man taking the sideline cut saw him and gave it to him an excellent point. Ivan O'Mahony is fouled and this will present St Finbars with a chance of closing the gap once again. So John O'Connor taking over the free responsibilities from uh, Brian Cunningham who was uh, taken off, we presume injured. Yes, Brian did pick up a shoulder charge early in the game there. Well, maybe that was it. John O'Connor, is he accurate again? The answer is no to the left and wide. Well, that could cost the bars today. Puck out from Charlie Wilson up towards Mark Folio. That was well held, but dropped in the end. Now John Griffin prepared to get it away anywhere. Arbery looking to come on the attack once again. That was good hurling indeed. Good stick work by Adrian White. And now Jeff O'Connell in the corner. Connor Ryan is out there to try and dispossess him, but Jeff O'Connell has sneaked inside. And O'Connell still going. Was that a foul, Mark Foley? Well, he didn't get enough on it, Mark Foley. But Bars were looking to get away with that. Well, Jeff certainly is troubling the Bars full back line. He's a rangy player, big, strong player. And when he gets that ball, again, he's, he's making the opportunities. Three minutes remaining. Just less than that in this first half. But... Uh, Carberry will be very happy with their first half work up to now, leading by two points, ten points to eight. Now Mickey Barry, can he do something about this scoreline? He's got options here, and Barry goes for the point this time, and is he successful? No, very much to the left and wide. But Carberry has that two-point lead, ten points to eight, and uh, time running out in this first half, only less than uh, 30 seconds remain in this opening half. So Barsley will be hoping to get another score before they go in at half-time. John Griffin, that's good work really by Griffin. And as he fouled, no, says the referee. And Mark Foley trying to get it up on the stick. But again, very casual, Ger, Mark Foley. Well, yeah, I think Mark uh, certainly would need to explode into life a little bit because um, he is getting some loose ball there and he's not, he's not moving like he should be onto them. Well, that was good work again. Now Foley has a chance. Well held this time. And a good uh, switch inside to Barry Hart and Hart going for his first score of the game but instead finds Darren O'Donoghue in a perfect position O'Donoghue must score from here and Darren O'Donoghue has got his second score of the game but more importantly a three point lead for Carberry and that was greeted by the well, Carberry supporters that's a sign just how good this Carberry team is at hurling skills a good pass by Mark Foley to the in rushing Barry Hart he picked out uh, Darren O'Donoghue with an excellent point well that uh, whistle sounded by the referee means it's half time and both teams cheered off the pitch for that remarkable hurling display in this first half. It's Carberry lead by 11 points to 8. The Carberry dressing room, Jerem sure a little bit happier at halftime than the Bars one, leading by three points. Well, I'm sure there will be, Trevor, but I see Charlie McCarthy on the field there, waiting for the Carberry team to come out and getting around to the players, trying to get them going, and I'm sure he'll succeed in that. Well, Mark Foley got that ball into Darren O'Donoghue, I'm sure. He was told to buck it up a bit at half-time. He's strong on the challenge then. Frank Ramsey, good hurling again. The full-back, Jerry Ryan getting that one away. And that's good hurling down that left-hand side for Carberry. Few positional switches at half time as Tony Doolan uh, brought that ball down. Mainly on the St. Finbar's team. We'll tell you about that later. Potter Crowley sends the ball inside to Mark Foley. Is this going to be Foley's opening score instead? He picks out the corner forward, Barry Hart. And Hart into Darren Dunno, and no problems here. That's good hurling by Carberry. Once again, Mark Foley setting up Barry Hart and Barry spotting that Darren O'Donoghue who was all alone loose. Passed the ball out to him and another point for Carberry. Well, that's Carberry well held by again. Frank Ramsey. And Ramsey hits that one wide. Left and wide for Frank Ramsey. Good chance then. The bars of seven wides in the game so far. And that was a good chance. Gone astray again. Well picked up here by Seamus O'Leary. And O'Leary trying to make headway. But he was dragged, says the referee. I think he... Slip then and looking to get the free. A good positive play by Seamus O'Leary. Billy O'Shea will take this free from long range. 
And O'Shea dropping it in short inside to Mickey Barrett. Thought he had it for a moment. That would have been danger, but maybe danger here yet. The ball right across the square. And now Frank Ramsey trying to get a turn in. And Ramsey, second time round. And has that got a no? Well, it's held by the goalkeeper. That was good goalkeeping by Charlie Wilson. And a sensible ball out wide to the fullback. Seamus O'Leary against uh, Mark Foley. One winner there. And O'Leary really held that ball well. Seamus has played an excellent game. Very, very good of, under the ball. And he's very deceptive once he gets it. He's, he's fairly fast in getting away with the ball out too. Well, St. Finbar is wasting a few good opportunities. And uh, they're trailing by four points. They really need the scores. Billy O'Shea this time with a good uh, effort. And that one has gone over. A very good uh, long-range free from Billy O'Shea. And uh, I think that's Billy's first score of this final. He wants the perfect blade of grass. Fairly difficult to find there under that stand there, Trevor. Fairly soft there. Indeed it is. Good cut. Well, that ball breaking nicely for No Leonard and picked up lovely by Frank Ramsey. Is that great knack of doing that, but he fouls as the referee. The Carberry supporters don't like it. And the referee penalises... Well, I do think in more circumstances a referee wouldn't blow for that one because it was a hook and his momentum carried him into the player uh, while the player was already falling from the hook. It was Dennis O'Neill who was penalised and his opposite number, Billy O'Shea, is the responsibility from this free. He's done it a few moments ago and he's done it again. Billy O'Shea has been accurate in these uh, last few minutes and he brings the bars closer now to Carberry. 12 points to 10. Many neutrals say that uh, it's always hard to beat St Finbar especially in a final they never give up and they've proved that in the past but they haven't won one since 88 and they're eager down there in Troker to win it but uh, the incentive always there for Carberry playing in their first final and that's a good effort and a great score scored by Dennis O'Neill well Trevor that was an absolutely beautiful point picked the ball didn't catch it struck it beautifully over the bar I'd like to see more of that kind of play, Trevor, in the game. Well, Ivan O'Mahony was unlucky then. But it's Michael Holland who gets it away, boots it away for Carberry. And now Coleman Murphy takes over. Murphy running towards goal, already one point for him. And he's bearing down a goal here, and nobody to stop him. And he's still going, but eventually stopped well by John Griffin. Foley does enough to get it out to Barry Hart. And Hart trying to get room for the shot. And that's a good strike, but is it over? It is. Well, Jerk Cunningham is furious down there that that ball was carried to the left and wide. And he, I'm not sure that that went over the crossbar. He is indeed furious. Uh, Jer had a good view of it. But in fairness to the umpire, he had an excellent view of it too. And I think the ball did tail off wide after it had went by the, uh, the, the upright Trevor. I think it was a point. Well, is that scoreboard uh, right? 14 points to 10. Bars getting another point. Frank Ramsey. Darren O'Donoghue taking his eye off it. But uh, it was uh, Joe Kennedy who slipped. So Kennedy showed great composure then. And Billy O'Shea, great stick work by Billy O'Shea on the pressure. And now in towards uh, Tim Finn. But Ivan O'Mahony takes over. And that was, uh, well, well that different was a, sort of defending. That was a sliding tattle, I think, Trevor, that time. From Barry from Buckley. Plays a bit of soccer in his spare time. Frank Ramsey. And a good ball into the corner forward position. They're waiting for it as Paul Ford. And a lovely turn again by Ford. He can do this. He is a dangerous player, Paul Ford. Getting it in dangerously. And this could be a goal here for Quaid. He boots it. And the goalkeeper makes a terrific save. Well, that was a great goal-scoring chance for St. Finbars, which would have brought the sides level. Now Billy O'Shea into no Leonard. Poor ball though, and Leonard loses out, but Seamus O'Leary has it now. Good work by Seamus O'Leary, and O'Leary's uh, shot is on target, and a great point. That's an inspirational point from Seamus O'Leary, Ger. It was indeed, and badly needed after they missed that opportunity there for a goal. Hurling hard here now. And Bars get it away, but a line ball for Carberry. Of course, when we're talking about the two centre forwards not scoring, Trevor, uh, I think we should also mention that the two centre backs are two very, very good players. Adrian White for Carberry is having an excellent game, fine, solid player, and Seamus O'Leary is having a, a blinder for the bars. Good point. This time the free going St. Finbar's way. 
and Billy O'Shea will take it. So Billy O'Shea with a long range effort here. This time it's uh, short. Paul Ford was under it and Paul Ford watched it all the way and now it's broken for Ivan Amani and it's a goal! Oh, great goal! Well, the Bars bench are on their feet cheering that one. Well, that's a lead again for the Bars and it was a fine goal. Paul Ford got the ball in the corner, put it into Ivan Omani who hit a rocket of a shot to the roof of the net. Just what the Bars needed at this stage, Trevor, because Carberry were beginning to impose themselves on the game. Charlie McCarthy is a happier man than no Crowley at this stage, but you're a long way to go. Anything can happen to Hurling. You know that as well as anyone. Yes, indeed. Carberry still have the, um, the talent to do well, and they still have the, the capacity to get a vital goal still. Connor Ryan and John Griffin, determination shown in their faces. No Leonard clearing that one up towards Tim Finn. Finn leaves it, beat him. Paul Ford, all the little tricks from Ford, gets his shot in towards goal. And it's clear that's a 65, and I think that's the first 65 of the game. They've brought in a substitute. Jerk Collins has come in. We'll tell you who's gone off in a few moments. But Billy O'Shea, in the meantime, is trying to send St. Finbars into a bigger lead. He does that. Billy O'Shea has got a vital score. They call it, Jerk, don't they, the insurance point? Well, it's a little too long maybe to go for to be calling it an insurance point, Trevor. But I tell you, it's a vital score for the Bars because it puts extra pressure now on Carberry again. It's a four-point lead and Mark Foley has been withdrawn, Ger. So it's uh, Ger Collins who's come in from Mark Foley. He had a rough time of it from uh, Seamus O'Leary, who for me, up to now, has been the man of the match. Well, I think certainly he would be my man of the match too, Trevor. He's given an exhibition of hurling. Um, it will be interesting to see now in the last few minutes can uh, Carberry resurrect the, the fluent player that they had in the opening passages of play? Well, they'll be sending this one in. It's uh, Jim O'Sullivan who sends a dangerous ball in. Jerk Cunningham will have to be careful here. And Bars defended well, but it's Porter Crowley retrieving it for Carberry. Now, can Carberry get something from this? Pressure for St. Finn Bars here. And it's caught in the end and a chance to goal! <laughs> Nobody saw Jeff O'Connell. Jerk Cunningham saw him all right, but it was too late then. And O'Connell has carved out a goal. Now, Mickey Barry, bearing down and goal for St. Finbars. And still Mickey Barry, be chased here, and Barry takes his point. What a final we're seeing here. Uh, that was an excellent reply. Getting back to the goal, a great goal, because uh, Padre Crowley just picked up a loose ball, couldn't go for a point, so he elected to send it across the square. Jeff caught it and raced into position to just belt the ball to the net. So two points in it, and what a final we're seeing here. Marvellous stuff. Jeff O'Connell has thrown a lifeline to Carberry, and Mickey Barry responds with a point for St. Finbars. But now an opportunity for Carberry to get a point back here, and that one is taken. A great score by Carberry. And it's taken by Dennis O'Neill. A point between the teams, 116 for St. Finbars, 115 for Carberry. Well, the crowd are really rising to this game, Trevor. It's been played in a great sporting uh, spirit and certainly plenty of excellent hurling. Joe Kennedy has it for St. Finbars. No free play on. And that's going out for a line ball. Not yet. That was close hurling then. Picked up by Michael Holland. And Holland sends a dangerous ball in there. Now, can Carrie get something from this? Well, they get the loose ball. Doolan making life difficult for Carberry here. And that's a free. Well, really ridiculous foul then by uh, Connor Ryan. Well, I can't believe that Connor would commit a foul like that at this stage of the county final when there was absolutely no need for it. Harry Crowley was gathering a ball, going absolutely nowhere except towards the corner flag with it uh, when Connor decided to take the legs from under him. Well, now Tony Crowley is in the play for Carberry. Tony Crowley coming in. So would you think that was a good move from Noel Crowley a while ago, bringing in uh, Jerk Collins to replace Mark Foley? Well, I think they did have to make uh, changes because things just weren't working out for them. Audrey Crowley has uh, brought the size level once again. It's Darren O'Donoghue, surprising enough, has been replaced and he's getting a firm, uh, firm handshake for his contribution to the game. But I think it's disappointed he's being withdrawn, Darren O'Donoghue. 
Well, in, in fairness to the Calvary mentors, you must admire them because uh, they're not afraid to take off established players and good players when, they're not, when things aren't going well for them. Well, Ivan O'Mahony, was he fouled then? Well, St. Finbar's supporter says he was, but the referee didn't give anything. And no Leonard battling here, and it's picked up well by Tony Crowley. The substitute has just come in. And now Joe Kennedy. And Kennedy up the line for Mickey Barry to chase. And another off the ball incident then. Well, it's frantic stuff here. Michael Holland battling, battling with Mickey Barry. And Holland gets the clearance in. Kennedy should win this one. And Ramsey in space. Frank Ramsey in plenty of space, but he slipped. And he was just too anxious to get that one up on the stick. And had he kept his control, Bars would have surely been in front again because that was a great scoring chance for Frank Ramsey. But unfortunately for him, he slipped. And Jeff O'Connell now against Seamus O'Leary. And O'Connell and O'Leary here. Jeff O'Connell going all the way, but Griffin is there to stop him. No. And O'Leary still battling. And the referee is going to give a clash ball. Well, well, who would believe it? With just three minutes on the stopwatch, it's... St. Finbar's one goal in 16, Carberry one goal in 16. Well, it's certainly heart-stopping stuff, Trevor. Last few minutes, players are really tired. They'll be anxious now not to make any silly mistake that could cost the team the county final. Seamus O'Leary then in for the line ball. Jeff O'Connell picks up uh, the loose ball, and Tony Doolan gets it away. But Carberry on the attack here, and a free... Well, another really, you just mentioned it, a ridiculous free, really, from Tony Doolan. Well, once again, a replica of that early one that Conor Ryan uh, committed. Nine frees apiece in this game. But this presents Carberry with a chance of going back in front. They haven't been in front for about, well, 20 minutes of the game now. But uh, what a chance here for Porter Crowley. He hits it well and true. It's gone over. Carberry are back in front. Well, in fairness to Porter Crowley, Trevor, that was a pressure point if I ever saw one he certainly took it very very well he's the game's top scorer with seven points most of those in fact I think all of those from freeze now Mickey Barry is making his way towards goal Ivan Amani and Ivan Amani battling still for it and Carberry get it away anywhere now John Griffin Griffin has it on the stick and gets the shot in John Griffin is this the point it's gone to the right and wide well, St. Finbar well, was furious. Trevor, the umpires certainly looked at one another very agonisingly there. As some of the bars players felt it was over the bar. But it's been given as wide. Well, that's a wide for St. Finbar's, and that means Carberry is still in front. Nine wides for St. Finbar's, six wides for Carberry. And the bars furious that that one was given as a wide. Seamus O'Leary trying to get it under control but it's Carberry again it's still anyone's final but Carberry are in the driving seat they lead by a point and this could be a goal for Jeff O'Connell is a goal number two for him still a chance and Jerk Cunningham has come to the bars rescue and a free in the end but Cunningham really saved the bars then because well, that would have been curtains certainly Carberry had a chance to wrap it up there they certainly had Jeff took a little bit too much out of the ball Quick free being taken out by Jerk Cunningham, a long one. A long free indeed, in towards the full forward line. Is this Bar's last chance? Because time is up. Ivan Amani, and that's a point for St. Finn Bars. They're level again. And we're now playing time added on, I make it. A few seconds of it. Well, Trevor, I'm sure Jeff O'Connell will have nightmares about that last chance that he had. Even a point, I think, at that stage would certainly have put the pressure enormously on the bars. Level with time up now. 117 apiece, and as the, the old street saying is, uh, next score wins. It could be that way. 117 each, referee looking at his watch. Is it to be Carberry's day? No, it's not. The referee, I think, has sounded the whistle for full time. And it's ended all level. Well, what a county senior early final. Well, I must say, it ended in a little bit of an anti-climax, Trevor, because uh, it was a little unfair, I think, and harsh on Carberry to win the game so quickly when they were attacking, they had a chance. But that's hurling. The referee decides the time. He blew it bang on the time. And I think both sets of supporters relieved that they'll be seeing, hopefully, another classic county final between two excellent teams. The final score then here in this Cork County Senior Hurling Championship final. St. Finbar's one goal in 17. Carberry one goal in 17. We'll be back here in Parky Cueve again. Well, Noel, after that epic battle, you might sum up your feelings uh, for us. 
I suppose relieved to get another chance when we were four points down with Timmy to go, I thought it was gone with. But what we showed all day is, is a good spirit in the team. So I think we showed it again today and it's we nearly we should have pulled it off in the end, but unfortunately we we live, we have to fight another day. Well, you made a few uh, changes near the end. Well when the team is down like you have to take take chances and hope that they work. Fortunately for us the change that we made worked out for us now. It could have went the other way as well that Bars could have gotten more on top but the lads that came in just fitted in well and it, it just worked out for us. We're not sure quite yet uh, the replay date, no, no? No, maybe next Sunday. They might, they might throw the football back match in, or football final back another week. I think this, this time of the year it's probably better to get the hurling over it because the grounds are going to be getting worse. So hopefully it might be next Sunday. Well, it was great support here for both teams today. You were happy with the coverage turnout, no doubt? Well, I was, yeah. As I was saying all along, like, we'll, we'd have the majority of the support there today. Um, it was a great advertisement for, for hurling. And um, I think we brought, we showed that cock hurling is still alive and doing very well. Right, a few heart stopping moments in the game, and uh, but no doubt you're looking forward to uh, doing it all over again here at Parker Creek. Well, we are, we are yeah. Um, we're beginning to like this pitch. Um, this is our, this will be our fourth time here now, our second replay. So I'd have no fears the next day. Well, Charlie, tremendous finish to a tremendous final. Which is a tremendous game, Jar. I suppose for, for neutral spectators, up in the stand there, it was one of the best finals in years. I suppose really, it was score for score. From start to finish. Uh, I suppose we were a little bit unlucky uh, that we didn't win it in, in the sense that we, we went four points up there in the second half and things were looking well for us. But well, fairness, they came back and got the goal. At that stage, Charlie, did you, when you win four points up, it did look like that Carby were losing their composure a bit. They brought on two subs, which seemed to work excellently for That's them. Right. They had two fresh men there and they seemed to work well for them. And we left them in for that goal. And in fairness to them, uh, again, going back over the two games against the Pearson, uh, they came back after uh, the pressure being put on them. They still came back the whole the way and, and they got some very good scores. That's you know? right, right up to the very end there. Jeff O'Connell had a great opportunity and Jerk O'Neill brought off a great save in the last minute. Tremendous save because, uh, in fairness, if you put the ball over the belt, it was all over. But it was a great save from Jerk O'Neill and uh, we got the equalising point out of that. You know? It was a tremendous score. That's right. Well, all to look forward to again now, Charlie. How you, you, so you've got to gear yourself up for a replay at this time of year, not the easiest of things to it's do. Not really, because like, we've put so much in there over the last number of weeks there that we've really geared up for the match today. I know um, the match ending in a draw, you, you have to go back again you know, and get fellas ready again, which isn't an easy thing to do, but I suppose it's the same for Calgary. Well, right now, you're probably drained, but I'm sure come Sunday or Sunday week, whenever the replay is, you'll be out there and giving us a, an exhibition of hurling like was given again today. <coughs> well, I hope we give an exhibition an exhibition of hurling, John, of hurling John, but uh, I hope we'll be on our side this time that we'll win the game. Yes, the view is there from the two coaches.